diversity amongst um, musicians. Here they are coming off stage. We're just hoping to get some words for them as they come off stage. Hello. Hi. I feel a little bit like, um, you know, the people who are standing waiting at the finish line at the Olympics. <laughs> You're coming in fresh off the stage. But it is a very athletic job you've got, isn't it? It really is. Especially a piece like that, I think. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was saying to uh, Sarah Walker, we were chatting just before, and we were saying, actually, this piece goes past so fast, doesn't it? It does. You don't really have a chance to think. I mean, it's, I'm playing all the time. Jimmy's conducting all the time. The orchestra playing like mad. It's got such a momentum to it. Uh, and I think that's why it's, it's such great music to play and to, to listen to, I hope, as well. Satisfying to conduct, James? Absolutely. It's a real cracker of a piece, I think. And uh, I've, I've always had a great admiration for my old teacher, John Caskin. And um, I, I think it's marvellous that uh, the, a scheme like this has allowed it to come back into the, the public eye. Uh, it's very difficult to um, get, get new work in front of the, the public, but uh, something like this allows us to do that. This um, is encore, this, this project, which absolutely. is giving it a second performance. Yes, yeah. and um, it's, it's a real worthy piece. Uh, and I think it does need a few hearings. It, it does, yes. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's tough music, on. but it's, it's soulful, lyrical music. Um, the violin sings. Uh, it reminds me of the Berg in many ways. Mm. It's a real romantic concerto in many ways. And the Berg was, was a concerto that John Caskin, I think, came to very early on. I mean, even as a child, I think it was one of the records that was ever first played to him. I think so, and you can hear that in, in all his music from, from early on. Mm. Um, Berg, uh, and, and that's, that romantic soulfulness has all, always been a kernel uh, in John's creative makeup. Daniel, I was um, talking earlier about how many different projects you're involved in. How do you actually do that? How do you keep all these musical plates spinning? Well, you just have to plan very well, and, and uh, you know, there's, there's so much enthusiasm in these projects. You know, uh, I get to do so many great things. It's just an inspiration, and, and that's what keeps you going, and you need to plan it. And fortunately, we, we work so far in advance, you know, we go two, three years in advance sometimes. So you know where you are, and it's just a question of fitting into it. Um, but a piece like that, I mean, that takes some learning. It, it does, yeah. Um, but it was great to have John Caskin come over to, to Amsterdam, where I live, and we worked on it for, for a full day, and I got his insight into it, and that, that makes it so much easier you know, when you actually get to meet the composer and to, to find out what's behind the music and not just the notes in front of you. It makes a big difference.